Buenos días a todos. El evento de hoy estará disponible en roads.edu con subtítulos y traducción al español. Gracias.
Welcome to the inauguration ceremony of the 21st president of Rhodes College, Jennifer M. Collins. I am the Reverend Beatrix Weil, and I serve as the chaplain of Rhodes College. I invite you to join me in taking a posture of stillness for our invocation and one big deep breath. We gather one year into a presidency and yet at an inauguration. 175 years grounding us and reaching toward a future of untold possibilities. As this new chapter unfolds, we bless Rhodes College with the steadiness of our shared history. We bless President Collins with the vision for new chapters. We bless our board of trustees with the words to invite her into both creativity and care. We bless our community as we write the story together. We bless this weekend with joy, fun, safety, unity, and celebration. Amen. Next, I'd like to invite the chair of the Board of Trustees, Ms. Deborah Craddock, to the podium. Welcome, distinguished guest. The 20th president and first gentleman of the college Marjorie Haas and Larry Haas, the 19th President and First Lady of the College, Bill and Carol Trout, former Interim President Carol Stevens, former Board Chair Spence Wilson, <coughs> President Collins' family, including her husband, Adam Charns, and children Jake, Lily, and Sam, and her mother and mother-in-law, Kay Collins and Gail Charns. Representatives of colleges and universities and other educational organizations, community partners, Rhodes faculty, staff, students, and alumni, Rhodes trustees, and emeriti trustees. <laughs> Welcome to Rhodes College for this exciting celebration of the inauguration of Rhodes 21st President Jennifer Collins and the 175th anniversary of the college. It is my honor as chair of the Rhodes Board of Trustees to commence this special day honoring President Collins. Rhodes College, a place that aspires to graduate students with a lifelong passion for learning, a compassion for others, and the ability to translate academic study and personal concern into effective leadership and action in their communities and the world. Rhodes College, a residential place of learning that inspires integrity and high achievement. Rhodes College, a college that changes lives. Rhodes College, a place like no other. These are essential tenets of Rhodes College, ones that all of us, students, alumni, parents, faculty, and staff, strive to uphold and honor. These principles and values are what brought us to Rhodes. We truly value all of these elements and want to make sure that, the road, that Rhodes continues to offer the highest level experience for students many years into the future. As the search committee embarked on the mission to recommend Rhodes 21st president, we knew that person had to understand and embrace these principles. When we first interviewed President Collins, she presented and articulated a thoughtful, thorough review of Rhodes College all without any notes, I might add. She knew what Rose had accomplished over the years, our current state of affairs, and already had a clear vision of where the college needed to go and how we could accomplish our mission going forward. President Collins understood the challenges we faced, but she preferred to call them opportunities. The committee immediately knew she got Rhodes and she recognized the value of the Rhodes experience. She told us it starts with listening and then with communication. This is the message President Collins delivered to the committee and she has stayed true to her commitment. She has diligently listened to students, faculty, staff, parents, alumni, 
trustees and community partners over this past year to further develop her understanding of roads. Also, as importantly, she has communicated. I have heard from so many of you how much you enjoy and appreciate her monthly updates, and she reserves time each week for students who want an opportunity to have time with their president. President Collins and I began our leadership tenure simultaneously on July 1st, 2022. Working with her over the last year has been a true joy, and I have seen firsthand the talents the search committee identified. Respectfulness, decisiveness, diligence, passion, and commitment. I know we can all look forward to a bright future for Rhodes under her leadership. Congratulations, President Collins. At this time, we will hear from representatives of Rhodes constituencies who will bring insight and official greetings for our 21st president. Uh, following these comments, we will hear a musical selection from the Rhodes singers under the direction of Carol Blankenship, chair and professor of music. Good morning. I'm honored to stand before you today on behalf of the Rhodes faculty to reflect on this momentous occasion in the college's history, our 175th anniversary and the inauguration of our 21st president, Dr. Jennifer Collins. A quote from Charles Deal, president of Rhodes from 1917 to 1949, hangs in several hallways on this campus. It reads, Realizing that the good is ever the enemy of the best, we did not seek merely the good, but the best. There was ever before us the idea of excellence. When I arrived here in 2003, these words did not mean very much to me. Good seemed pretty good to me then. But 21 years later, I understand. Rhodes College is never complacent. It never settles. Our students come here because they want to excel as scholars, as advocates, as leaders, as human beings. Helping them pursue not merely the good, but the best in themselves is the core mission of this institution. My faculty colleagues astound me every day with their dedication, not just to their students, but to their discipline, their craft, and to their own development as teacher scholars. They deliver a world-class liberal arts education year in and year out. My staff colleagues across campus bring unparalleled passion and commitment to their work on the athletic fields, in the gatehouses, the refectory, the library, in the offices of development, student life, human resources, and career services. They make Rhodes not just a college, but a tight-knit community. I know that while I might have been a good professor somewhere else, I'm the best version of myself for having spent my career at Rhodes College. Ultimately, though, a community is only as strong as its leadership. So I'm delighted to formally welcome Dr. Jennifer Collins to ours. Her razor-sharp intellect, her palpable kindness, her wicked sense of humor, her commitment to the liberal arts, her wealth of experience, and her inspiring vision for Rhodes' future make her the ideal person to lead this college, if not for the next 175 years, then for what I hope is a very long time. We've already had a chance to work alongside President Collins for a year, and it's clear that like President Deal, she always has before her the idea of excellence. On behalf of the faculty, President Collins, congratulations on your inauguration. We look forward to many years of your leadership. Thank you. Chair Craddock, members of the board, President Collins, distinguished delegates, guests, faculty, staff, and students. 
I'm honored to stand before you today as a representative of the staff of this college, as I'm currently the longest serving member, now beginning my 49th season. As a member of the class of 1971, I can offer a view of the college's staff over the last 57 years. I was privileged to get to meet Mr. Johnny Rollo and his wife, Louise. His service to the college, as you must know, became a life work. Starting as a student in Clarksville, moving with the college here in 1925, he then graduates to become our first head of physical plant. He makes his family home in the Harris Lodge. The stately Avenue of Oaks, which he planted in 1926, reminds us of our heritage to this day. Mr. Rollo's devotion to this place is unequaled. He serves as a model for us all. I have witnessed council, countless individuals over these many years whose love of this place and their work in it has been astonishing. Other alum employees have said they were grateful for some very fine service from the staff of their era. For me, a couple of those staff became my mentors, and I owe them a great debt of gratitude for their effect on my life. Now, I'm an employee of the college, and I'm happy to say this phenomenon remains true up to this day. It's a privilege to offer advice and encouragement to our students to pass it on, as the saying goes. On a campus the size of Rhodes, we have the benefit of working closely with each other to produce a harmonious result. We are often serving each other's needs in order to accomplish the jobs required. With the words loyalty and service in our seal, we can see how they are being applied daily in the ways we work together. We saw this most profoundly as we rallied to meet the overwhelming needs during the COVID pandemic. The staff of Rhodes College are its sinew, its muscle, its nerve system, and together we're the keeper of the flame. We want that flame to burn always brighter for our students and our faculty to have a beautiful, welcoming place in which to learn and grow. And if we've done our jobs and done them well, our students should be well on their way to leading lives of genuineness and excellence, as was President Beal's wish. President Collins, we pledge our support to you in all the ways we can offer. We look to your leadership to help us keep the very best of Rhodes College and to guide us as to how to move forward to an ever greater success. We love what we do. It comes from the heart. We thank you and this college for giving our hearts a good home. Thank you. Good morning. It's an immense honor to be in front of all of you today, especially on such a momentous occasion. When I was asked to speak, the instructions were simple. President Collins requested that the remarks be focused on Rhodes and my experience here and not on her. I'm not sure I could write a better, more succinct summation of President Collins if I tried. She is a humble, compassionate leader who, even at her own inauguration, would rather send her Rhodes than herself. That being said, I will respect her wishes and keep her mostly out of this. <laughs> One of my favorite things I get to do at Rhodes is give tours. Every time I give a tour, I finish it by telling the prospective students and their parents why I chose Rhodes. And each time, I try to teleport back to my high school self and recall what it was that made me choose Rhodes over the dozen other colleges I toured. But what is perhaps more important than why I chose Rhodes all those years ago is why I continue to choose Rhodes every day. The things I never could have known until I got here. The reasons I wake up every day grateful to be a Rhodes student. I continue to choose Rhodes because I am taught by faculty that challenge me. Faculty that push their students to academic excellence and teach beyond the confines of their chosen subject. I continue to choose Rhodes because I get to work with staff that care for me. Staff that go above and beyond to ensure that every single student feels like they have a home here. I continue to choose Rhodes because I'm surrounded by students that inspire me. Students whose passion knows no bounds and who shape this campus for the better every single day. Under President Collins' leadership, I have no doubt that Rhodes College will continue to be a place worth choosing over and over again. Thank you.
Greetings to the Rose community assembled today as we celebrate 175 years of history, tradition, and excellence as an institution. In 1989, I took my first steps on this campus as a student. By the time I graduated, I knew that Rhodes fostered my personal growth and I understood the value of the Rhodes education. My daughter Mallory, class of 23, enrolled and took her first steps on this campus 30 years later. While I value the Rhodes experience as a student, there was something even greater in witnessing the growth and transformation of my own daughter. So many things have changed over a generation, but at the same time, the Rhodes liberal arts education, the campus culture, the Rhodes community, and many of the traditions have remained consistent, which allowed my daughter and I to connect despite our own unique experiences. As a parent, I was fortunate to witness the influence and impact that Rhodes had on my daughter as a critical thinker, a servant leader, and an advocate of community engagement. The development and transformation of Mallory over her, her four years was a proud moment for me. Many would comment that Mallory followed in my footsteps by attending Rhodes. But I would quickly reply and say, although she may have followed me here, she created her own footsteps in her journey as a Rhodes student. As I translate my own parental experience to the 175th anniversary, it reinforces that the Rhodes legacy is much greater than just having a loved one attend the same institution, but rather a legacy that connects us all through the Rhodes education, the transformative culture, the aesthetic campus, and the sense of community, despite our own personal or generational experiences. So as we celebrate President Collins as the leader of Rose College, please be reminded that the Rhodes legacy lives within us individually and unites us as a community. The generational trends may change, but the Rhodes core tenets remain the same. Today, we celebrate 175 years of excellence and congratulate President Collins as the 21st president of Rhodes College to continue the legacy for alumni, the current students, and students of the future. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Michael Thompson, a native Memphian and class of 2000. It is my great honor and privilege to serve as president of the Rhodes College International Alumni Association. On behalf of our numerous alumni from around the world, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you, President Collins, Adam, Jake, Lily, Sam, and to our extraordinary community. No matter the diversity of our backgrounds, all Rhodes alumni have something special in common. Rose College was a formative, life-changing experience for each of us. And your presidency will ensure that Rhodes continues to provide formative, life-changing experiences for future generations. As a first-generation college graduate, what the Rhodes experience did for me is nothing short of amazing. Briefly, I entered Rhodes in 1996 as the only African-American male in the class of 2000. I repeat the only African-American male in the class of 2000 with three other African-American women out of 434 students. The remarks that I make today on this stage are more than just mere remarks welcome you to the college. These are the remarks of the heartfelt experiences of a Rhodes alum. As alumni, we share a desire for our college to continue to strive towards excellence. Rose is the common denominator that allows generational lines to blur as our common bonds emerge sharply into focus. President Charles Deal once said upon the opening of the Memphis campus in 1925, the good is ever the enemy of the best. 
This idea continues to drive our campus culture and has inspired the visions of each of our subsequent presidents. The important role our presidents play in the life of our alma mater cannot be underestimated. Four presidents and one interim president have guided the college since I first joined the Rose community. And since 2000, the world has experienced several challenges, including an economic downturn in 2008, a global pandemic in 2020, yet Rose stands even stronger among liberal arts colleges. With your leadership, we will be prepared for future challenges and continue to distinguish ourselves from other colleges and universities. Through the remarkable efforts of our past leaders, our degrees have become more valuable and the numerous accolades and national recognition our alma mater has received has brought pride and bragging rights to each of us. We now wait with eager anticipation what the future for Rose College will bring under, under the direction of our 21st president, Jennifer Collins. President Collins, when you took the reins on July 1, 2022, I also began my journey as president of the Rose College International Alumni Association. It is with great pride and joy that I can work alongside you and the team here at Rose to further our historic traditions and continue our focus on academic excellence. You are truly a dynamic, visionary, and inspiring leader, and you have eagerly embraced the values and tradition that make Rose exceptional. As an alum, I am proud of my alma mater's past, but even more engaged, excited, and optimistic for our future. Rose is a special place. The student-led honor code, passion for service, challenging academic environment, award-winning beautiful campus, personal relationships with faculty, living, learning, and playing in Memphis explain why so many of us continue to give so much of our time, talent, and treasure to our alma mater. On behalf of all the alumni who cherish their Rhodes experience, we sincerely welcome you and your family to Rhodes College. Good morning. President Collins, welcome to Memphis and congratulations. Rhodes College has been, is now, and will be in the future very important to the city of Memphis. You will celebrate 100 years in Memphis in 2025, and this institution and your graduates have greatly contributed to our community. I'm particularly proud that while only 10% of Rhodes students call Memphis home when they start here, 40% of them choose to stay in Memphis after graduation. And while they're here in school, they spend countless hours volunteering, interning, and embracing the Memphis community. I'm also proud of this institution's accomplishments, such as the Mike Curb Institute of, for Music being recently recognized by Billboard magazine as a top music business school, and the college being named one of the most innovative national liberal arts colleges by US News and World Report. An and an example of that President Collins just announced that a graduate here, Eric Matthews, CEO of Starco and a great partner of the city of Memphis, will serve as entrepreneur in residence, connecting this campus community with resources to launch new businesses throughout Memphis. In short, thank you Rhodes College for all you do for Memphis the servant leadership, intellectual curiosity, and vibrancy that the Rhodes community brings to Memphis is remarkable and appreciated. So on behalf of the 640,000 people of Memphis, congratulations and welcome Dr. President Collins.
protocol having been established, I will only recognize the president uh, and the past presidents who I greatly admire. Uh, this is a wonderful day in Rhodes history. It's another day that Jim Strickland has stolen my speech. <laughs> but he didn't know that President Collins was going to offer Deion Sanders the football coaching job next week. <laughs> Kerry Fowler is a good friend of mine, and he would have been here, but he's on government business with the State Department. And we talked about the process of choosing this president. He'd been very much involved in Marjorie's selection. I don't know if he was here when Bill was selected or not, but that was a great choice as well. He told me that the pool of candidates for this job was the best it's ever been, from spectacular colleges such as Rhodes and others throughout the country. And that's a credit to where this school has come. I remembered at Southwestern, and Southwestern was a good school too, and it had a Supreme Court justice as well, a good liberal Democrat Supreme Court justice. <laughs> but Rhodes has surpassed what Southwestern was, and it surpassed it with its presidents, its faculty, and its student body. We have great interns in our office from Rhodes. It helps make our office function both in Washington and in Memphis. And Rhodes has been recognized for its students' participation in community outreach. The Lynn and Henry Turley program here gets Rhodes and Rhodes students involved in making Memphis a better place, and Rhodes certainly does that. I did want to tell you, Kerry wished he could have been here, but he is doing the government's work in Rome and other places on food insecurity, but he made a wise choice in President Collins. We welcome you and hope you don't go to the Atlantic Coast Conference. <laughs> <laughs> you. Hello, my name is Michael Lamb. I'm a member of the class of 2004. And I now direct the program for leadership and character at Wake Forest University, where President Collins taught for 12 years. So on behalf of fellow Rhodes alumni, Wake Forest University, and that great liberal arts tradition that we share, I offer her my deepest congratulations and warm wishes on this very gracious and glorious day. An inauguration, especially on this August anniversary, is a kind of commencement, an opportunity to reflect on our past as we step bravely into our future. Today, I've been reflecting on my own commencement here at Rhodes almost 20 years ago. It was a cool May morning as we seniors paraded proudly into Fisher Garden, led by berobed faculty, supported by beloved family and friends, and surrounded by devoted staff, including physical plant staff, who'd spent hours that morning early preparing the grounds after a night of storms so we could graduate in the garden. In their presence among those towering trees, I felt wrapped in care, a care that is a hallmark of Rhodes College. On our way through Southwestern Hall that morning, we joined a time-honored tradition of graduates by crossing the seal, which out of superstition, we dodged for four years at Rhodes. I had skirted the seal on the way to classes in history or literature, talked with friends around it in the cloisters, and reflected on its meaning during honor council hearings as we strove to uphold our community's commitment to truth, loyalty, and service. Those three words imprinted on our seal help to define what makes Rhodes College so unique and transformative. First, Rhodes is deeply committed to the pursuit of truth, supported and stewarded by our liberal arts tradition. At Rhodes, truth is not simple or singular but complex and many-sided, illuminated by diverse traditions, perspectives, and disciplines that enable us to imagine and inhabit new ways of seeing, thinking, and being. This interdisciplinary education is vital in a world where our most complex problems won't be understood or solved by any one perspective, profession, or discipline. We need the liberal arts and sciences to flourish. Which is why now, as a professor of interdisciplinary humanities, I remain so committed to the liberal arts that I learned and discovered here at Rhodes. At Rhodes, moreover, the pursuit of truth is not static, but dynamic. 
evolving as we change and grow. Rhodes taught me that knowledge, valuable for its own sake, can transform not only how we think, but also how we act. Action, Emerson wrote in The American Scholar, helps thought, quote, ripen into truth. Whether in search for values courses or classes in art, history, literature, politics, philosophy, or religion, Rhodes professors showed me that ancient and modern thinkers, if engaged critically and constructively, are not simply historical artifacts, but relevant guides who can inform how we live today. The lifelong study of ethics and character that's now at the core of my own calling was nurtured here at Rhodes. I would not have become a scholar, much less a Rhodes scholar, without first being a scholar at Rhodes. In his liberal arts college newspaper, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. wrote that intelligence is not enough. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. Rhodes offers a true education, not only in its content, but in its care, in its commitment to that second core value, loyalty. At Rhodes, loyalty is not blind allegiance, but critical care, a responsive fidelity expressed through both support and accountability. I found such care in fellow students who shared similar values, passions, and ideals, but who through their differences challenged me to grow and expand. To this day, they remain among my closest and dearest friends. I also found this care in professors who see teaching and mentoring as central to their vocation as teacher scholars. When looking at colleges in high school, I toured one which shall not be named, where a professor there, upon learning my interest in Rhodes, shared his niece's experience here and said, we'll offer you a great education, but you have to go and find it here. At Rhodes, they'll take you by the hand and show it to you. He was right. Rhodes faculty and staff took me by the hand and showed me how to learn. Their instruction and example, their counsel and care were especially important for me, a scholarship student whose parents had not graduated from college. My Rhodes mentors became my most trusted and faithful advisors. They guided me as I grappled with challenging ideas in the classroom, sat with me as I wrestled with deep moral and spiritual questions, and counseled me as I discerned my own vocation to build my values in the world. I would not be a professor today at Wake Forest without professors at Rhodes who taught me how teaching can be a meaningful form of service. That third and final value, service, is essential to the Rhodes mission, encouraging us to take what we learn here and use it to engage the world. This commitment had a profound influence on my own character. As part of my service scholarship, I spent about 10 hours per week uh, in service on campus and in the community of Memphis. And that experience changed my life, truly. It taught me the difference between doing community service and serving the community. Service, I learned, was not just a one-time activity or a way to build a resume, but a way of learning and living that informs all that I am and all that I do. It inspired me to volunteer in school, soup kitchens, and habitat houses here in Memphis, to do humanitarian work in Uganda, to work on campaigns in politics across Tennessee, to pursue a PhD in moral and political philosophy, and now to lead a program at Wake Forest that seeks to equip leaders of character to serve humanity and support colleges and universities across the country in advancing that vital mission. Rhodes taught me that true service is humble, courageous, compassionate, a form of citizenship, stewardship, and solidarity. It's not simply giving ourselves to others, it's learning from them and working with them so together we can actually create and secure a more just and hopeful world. And today, at this moment in our history, there is no more urgent need or responsibility. So today, as we celebrate President Collins's wonderful inauguration and remember the values reflected in our road seal, may we pursue truth, loyalty, and service, not as a nostalgic nod to a bygone past, but as part of a living tradition that can equip and inspire us to boldly imagine and inaugurate our shared future so that Rhodes College's next 175 years are even better than its first. Thank you.
thanks to the road singers for that absolutely beautiful rendition and selection. President Collins, if you would please join me at the podium. On Thursday, October 21st, 2021, exactly two years ago today, the Rhodes Board of Trustees unanimously selected Jennifer M. Collins to serve as president of Rhodes College. We are gathered here today to formally induct her as the 21st president of Rhodes College. Jennifer Collins, do you hear and now ratify and confirm your consent already given to accept the presidency of Rhodes College with all the powers and responsibilities of that office. I do. Dr. Leslie Petty now bestows the presidential medallion, the Rhodes Seal, sculpted in silver by Professor Emeritus of Art, Lon Anthony. Dr. Terry Hill, senior member of the Rhodes faculty, holds Rhodes' most sacred symbol of the office, the Rhodes Mace. Designed by alumnus Brian Russell, the Mace symbolizes the faculty's union of purpose in their pursuit of truth and the nobility of their chosen endeavor. It serves symbolically to defend Rhodes' ideals of genuineness and excellence. Do you solemnly engage, maintain, and advance road standing as a college of the liberal arts and sciences, graduating students with a lifelong passion for learning and the ability to translate academic and personal concern into action in their communities and our world? I do. By the authority vested in me by the Rhodes College Board of Trustees through the state of Tennessee, I hereby confirm Jennifer M. Collins as the 21st president of Rhodes College. Please join me in the warmest of Rhodes welcome. Thank you so much for your very kind introduction, Deborah, and for your incredibly dedicated work as our board chair. I am truly honored that we began our service together. I want to extend my deepest thanks to all our speakers today. You honor us with your presence and your words, and you enrich our community in so many ways. I am so grateful that you are all part of the Rhodes family. Thank you to our delegates and honored guests. It is a privilege to learn from you and work together in this extraordinary mission of higher education we all share. I am truly grateful that so many of my predecessors in the presidency are here. President Trout, President Haas, and President Stevens, you have all done so much for Rhodes and the legacy of your leadership inspires me every day Thank you for your gracious and generous support as I have transitioned into the role. I also very much appreciate the committee responsible for planning this inauguration and our 175th anniversary celebration, especially Tim Hubner and Ann Beard. They have worked tirelessly to help us celebrate this important milestone in the life of Rhodes College, and we appreciate your hard work vision, and creativity. I also want to thank all the staff who translated that vision into reality. The event planners, the graphic designers, the caterers, the housekeepers, the facilities workers. I know how hard you have worked and I am so very grateful to you. Thank you to our student performers for sharing the gift of music with us throughout the morning. And a very special thank you to Kristen Hunt and Angie Britton in the President's Office. 
Without you, none of this, indeed nothing at all, would be possible. <laughs> to the members of our Board of Trustees, past and present, please know how much we appreciate your thoughtful and dedicated stewardship of this great college, working together with you and seeing your love for the college shine through all the ways you support this institution is one of the real joys of my position. To our community representatives, it is a blessing and a privilege to collaborate with you to support this fascinating city we are so fortunate to call home. Thank you for all the ways you serve Memphis. To my fellow members of the senior leadership team, thank you for the humility humor, vision, teamwork, and abiding commitment to Rhodes that you bring to the table every time we are together. To our incredible faculty and staff, it is an absolute honor to work in partnership with you. Thank you for all the ways you inspire, educate, and support our students. You make Rhodes the extraordinary college that it is, and I appreciate you more than words could ever say. To our current students and our alumni, thank you for choosing Rhodes. You are the heart and soul of everything we do, and your intelligence, curiosity, and passion are the reason that we are all here together. And in this year that marks our 175th anniversary, let us honor and acknowledge all our ancestors, all the generations of students, faculty, and staff who have walked these beautiful stone halls in the decades before us. It is the generation of Rhodes alumni and the community members who fill our hearts today who have created our legacy of leadership and who truly make Rhodes a place like no other. On a more personal note, I want to say thank you to my wonderful mother and mother-in-law for being here this morning. I am so grateful for all your support for so many years. I am also truly humbled to see colleagues from SMU and Wake Forest here. Those two institutions have shaped me as a teacher, as a scholar, and a leader. And I am so thankful to my colleagues from those two schools for enriching my life in so many different ways. To my extraordinary husband, Adam, thank you for being such a wonderful partner in our adventure together for the past 31 years. That's a really big number. <laughs> Being here would not be possible without you and all the ways you have supported our crazy and hectic two-career family. And to my beloved children, Jake, Lily, and Sam, being your mom is truly the greatest honor of my life. I love you all, and I also love Hunter, Keeley, and Natalie. Thank you for being an extended part of our family. As you have already heard, almost 100 years ago, Rhodes President Charles Deal said the words that um, Faculty Marshal Petty has said you see in so many places across our campus. Realizing the good is ever the enemy of the best. We did not seek merely the good, but the best. There was ever before us the idea of excellence. I am sure archivist extraordinaire Bill Short could confirm for us that these words have been the basis of many remarks and addresses at Rhodes College since President Deal first uttered them in 1925. If you will bear with me, I want to go in a more lyrical direction today. In this remarkable and uniquely American city, a city full of music and history and culture and art, a city of soul, it seems only fitting that music serve as our frame today. And as the inspiration for the shared future, we are so privileged to be building together. Here, I need to give special thanks to Professor Charles Hughes for helping me work through my musical inspiration. In 1946, Reverend William Herbert Brewster, a renowned Memphian, minister, educator, composer, and civil rights leader, wrote the beautiful gospel song, Move On Up A Little Higher, a song that, among other honors, received the Grammy Hall of Fame Award in 1998 and is included in the list of Songs of the Century by the Recording Association of America and the National Endowment for the Arts. Rhodes is incredibly honored to be the repository of Reverend Brewster's sermons and some of his printed music and recordings. Reverend Brewster 
implored us in this song to walk and never get tired, to fly and never falter, to move on up a little higher. In talking about the song, Reverend Brewster said it was intended to be a protest idea and an inspiration and urged listeners never to be satisfied with the mediocre. These themes of hope, of striving, of grit, of determination, of soul, of a commitment to fighting together to make our community a better place no matter what challenges stand in our way, echo throughout Rhodes, throughout Memphis, and throughout Memphis music. Another example is the terrific Stax hit, I'll Take You There, written by the legendary Al Bell, another Memphian, and made famous by the Staple Singers. This song is about an imaginary and aspirational place where nobody is crying, nobody is worried, no smiling faces are lying to the races, a word where the civil rights movement and the struggle for social justice has been fully realized. Indeed, Memphis music has inspired countless singers and songwriters over the decade, including one of my personal favorites, the boss, also known as Bruce Springsteen, who it turns out is a great student of Memphis music and a songwriter who in fact cites Elvis Presley as his genesis moment. The artist who made him realize that you could call upon the power of imagination and create a transformative self. My favorite lyrics from Mr. Springsteen come from his song based in the gospel tradition about an imaginary train that will take us to a transformative place, a place where dreams will not be thwarted and faith will be rewarded, a place where sunlight streams just as it does in the lyrics of William Brewster and Al Bell and so many Memphis artists. So just for a moment, I hope you will meet me in the land of hope and dreams because that is how I think about Rhodes, a place full of hope and a college with extraordinary dreams for its future. Let us begin with hope because hope is after all what a liberal arts education represents and the education that makes Rhodes so very remarkable. In today's polarized and often ugly world, a world where it sometimes seems that we can't agree on anything at all, the liberal arts education provided by our outstanding Rhodes faculty members gives us hope. The liberal arts give us the power to imagine a better future and the tools to work together to make that vision a reality. That is because the liberal arts empower students to analyze difficult material carefully and critically, to communicate effectively both orally and in writing, to truly listen to one another, to work together civilly and collegially, and to lead passionately, both on our campus and in their home communities. Through close collaboration with our wonderful faculty, and deeply meaningful co-curricular experiences shaped by our dedicated staff, Rhodes graduate students who are brimming with confidence, curiosity, cultural intelligence, and compassion. The poet Emily Dickinson famously wrote, I dwell in possibility. And my favorite part of the Rhodes educational experience is that we graduate students who can dwell in possibility, who can sit with the uncomfortable, and who can imagine a kinder, more equitable, and more just future. We graduate students who can lead with hope. Hope is the story of a member of the class of 1968 who recently told me that as a first-generation college student, she came to Rhodes suffering from a real deficit of self-confidence both academically and socially. But thanks to our faculty and staff, she graduated as a proud and talented chemistry major who went on to obtain a graduate degree at a time when there were only seven women in her entire graduate program at Duke, and then proceeded to transform the lives of hundreds of students as a teacher herself. Hope is our students who work on the CUBE satellite 
or in the St. Jude Summer Research Fellowship. Hope is the Rhodes Jazz Band and Singers and Orchestra and the Mike Curb Institute. Hope is the beekeeping and the craft clubs, the swimmers and our softball and soccer teams, our day scholars, our Bonner scholars, and the Kinney program, operating the longest running student-led soup kitchen in the country. Hope is the students who participate in our mock trial program or the Institute for Regional Studies or the Turley Memphis Center. In some, our students are extraordinary. Indeed, our students are precisely the kind of leaders the world needs to desperately confront the challenge of systemic poverty, homelessness, hunger, racism, and injustice. To give just a few examples, I could go on and on. Problems we can only solve if we truly come together courageously and collaboratively. Rhodes students and alumni and the outstanding faculty and staff who educate and mentor them offer us the hope that we can in fact listen to one another, that we can in fact work together to tackle these grand challenges and create meaningful and positive change. Because of Rhodes and its core commitment to translating academic study and personal concern into effective leadership and action throughout our world, the cherished members of our Rhodes community indeed help us all move on up a little higher. Because of Rhodes and the rigorous liberal arts education that we provide and the enduring commitment to service that we inspire, we dare to dream, we dare to hope that our graduates can indeed make the world a little better. As remarkable as Rhodes already is, as much hope as we currently create, we of course also have big dreams, dreams to keep walking forward into that ever brighter future imagined by Dr. Brewster. Rhodes aspires to be one of the finest liberal arts colleges in the country in terms of the experiences we provide for students both inside and outside the classroom and the support we provide for our dedicated faculty and staff. How will we get there? And for this, I need to give so much credit to the folks who worked so hard to create our wonderful strategic plan. But how will we, for example, strengthen our academic and creative excellence? We will, of course, double down on the things that make us special, but we will also demonstrate a willingness to innovate and to ensure that our curriculum is equipping students with the skills they need to succeed, not only in their individual career journeys in a rapidly changing world, but also to lead their communities forward. We will continue to invest in and involve evolve our outstanding humanities programs, including our signature surf and search, surf, search and life courses, that would be an interesting course, that provide students with a common framework to analyze life's grand challenges and the ability to engage in truly civil discourse by doing so. We will strengthen our wonderful programs in the social sciences and sciences, including finishing the much needed renovation of our science facilities and supporting our incredibly popular programs in newer fields like neuroscience, environmental science, and computer science. We, we will reduce barriers to interdisciplinary study and support innovative programs to give students multifocal lenses to view the world. Programs like our terrific majors in international studies, urban studies, health equity, and Africana studies, to give just a few examples. We will grow our offerings in business and entrepreneurship, wonderful programs that help distinguish roads among liberal arts colleges and provide students with the tools to grow their local economies and communities. And in our city full of soul, the city full of dance and art and theater and music, we will improve our arts facilities and strengthen and grow our offerings in the arts, including, if humanly possible and Sachs willing, bringing some kind of theater major back to the Rhodes community. After all, the arts are what reflect hope and courage and possibility and dreams back to us. In terms of our dreams for providing the finest college experience outside the classroom, for ensuring a transformational student experience, I have heard the message loud and clear from our students that they would like a student center. And renovations in dorms like Lassell Hall, 
to make that favorite phrase, the glassel castle, just a tiny bit more accurate. I promise we will continue our efforts to make that happen. But we dream of so much more than improved and expanded physical space. We dream of preparing students to succeed wherever their individual futures may take them and preparing them to lead in their communities with courage and resilience and strength of character and imagination. So what are some concrete steps we can take in a world where students are grappling with the pressures imposed by carefully curated and very fake world of social media that seems to require all perfection all the time. Not to mention all the external pressures in our increasingly uncertain world I mentioned a moment ago. Is it any wonder we are seeing rising levels of anxiety and depression among college students? Accordingly, we will work to expand our wellness offerings so our students can thrive along every possible dimension of wellness, including emotional, physical, spiritual, and social, in addition to their intellectual journeys. We will enhance our terrific career services programming so more employers across the country and around the globe can meet and hire our incredibly talented graduates. And we will ensure our curriculum both inside and outside the classroom is equipping students to succeed in a world of work that is constantly evolving. We will enhance learning opportunities outside our academic halls so students will have increasing opportunities to do internships and fellowships, engage in community service, study abroad, have leadership experiences, and collaborate with faculty in their research and creative activity. Those high impact practices that are closely linked to lifelong student success. We will deepen our relationship with the wonderful city of Memphis through an expanded institute for community engagement. And we will reaffirm the abiding commitment to community service that infuses every corner of this beautiful campus. So we are serving this great city in the ways that most benefit the amazing people who live here. And we will continue to improve our sports facilities and cheer on our Lynx student athletes. So we enhance our tradition of excellence, not only in the classroom, but on the court, in the pool, and on the field. We will achieve our dreams and secure our future by doing everything we can to strengthen our national and international outreach and presence. So students and families around the world will have the chance to learn about and experience this place like no other. We will launch a capital campaign to help us enhance our financial aid so any student can attend Rhodes without constraint from financial circumstances. And we will increase our support for faculty and staff so we can continue to bring the very best students, teachers, and mentors to Rhodes and to Memphis. We will offer new professional development and leading tra leadership training opportunities for faculty and staff to ensure our workplaces are full of joy and connection and opportunity for personal and professional growth. We will strive to foster a culture of transparency, collaboration, and shared governance. And we will increase support for the impactful research and creative activity our faculty generate every day to bring a little more sunlight and a little more hope into their academic fields and into our world. Finally, we will foster, foster a culture of belonging by centering diversity, inclusion, equity, access, and belonging at the heart of everything we do so that every student and every employee at Rhodes feels fully empowered to bring their whole selves to this wonderful college. It breaks my heart to hear that you were the only African American student in your first year class, and I'm very proud that would not be the case today. I am very proud that of the five senior hires I have made since coming to Rhodes, four are women and three are people of color. I am very proud that we have increased our score on the Campus Pride Index from a 3 out of 5 to a 4.5 out of 5 in the past year. I am very proud that we have started a vibrant new program to support our first generation students. And I am very proud that our new class of first year students is the most diverse class in the history of Rhodes College. Those accomplishments are due to the hard work and determination of so many people in this room, but we are not close to finished yet. And we will not waver in this fundamental 
and enduring commitment to our community to ensure that every lynx truly matters and that every lynx is truly valued. Our dreams are audacious and they are ambitious, but working together and with your support, I have every confidence that we will fly and never falter, that we will arrive at our future where our hopes and dreams cannot be thwarted and our abiding faith in this wonderful place like no other continues to be rewarded. Thank you for the opportunity to work together with you as your president. It is truly the honor and privilege of a lifetime. And thank you to all of you for being part of the extraordinary Rhodes community. Thank you, President Collins, for your inspiring remarks. Rhodes is indeed in capable hands and has a very bright future. Thank you to the other speakers for sharing your insight and perspective as well. Please join us in singing in the singing of the Rhodes alma mater and stand if you are able. The alma mater will be followed by the benediction offered by Rhodes Chaplain Reverend Beatrice Will. Following the recessional of those seated on the platform and special guests, we hope that you will join us for a reception honoring President Collins and her family in the Crane Reception Hall and McCallum Ballroom located on the second floor. remain risen in body or spirit for the benediction and recessional. As you go forth from this place, having been part of the opening of a new chapter in Rhodes College's 175 years of history, go knowing that you are part of something much bigger than yourself. Go knowing that each one of you has a role to play in this story. And go knowing that Rhodes College would not be the same without each and every one of you. And may that knowledge be a blessing. Amen. Mm -hmm. 